Hey, everybody, and welcome to a in, an incredibly exciting and special episode of Popcorn and Shield because of this treat that we're about to, to embark on. Today, we're sitting down with the two stars of The Conjuring movies, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. They, of course, play the real-life couple Ed and Lorraine Warren in The Conjuring universe, and the next film, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, is out right now. We've seen it. Uh, Vera and Patrick, thank you so much for being here to speak with us today. I'm I'm just like I'm a huge fan of these fr- of this franchise, so I just could not Aww. be happier to be here. Thank Aww. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We love doing it. Um, it's been has it been like a decade since the Conjuring universe first came to be? Uh, we started shooting in 17? in no seventeen. 2017? No, twenty seventeen. No, twenty twelve. No, the, the second one came out in like two thousand sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. So, no, no, we started shooting the first one in what? Since like really? 2012. 2012. 2012. Sorry. 2012. 2012. Yeah. I have a shirt from it. The English. Um, well, 20, the, the universe has been a huge success. It's one of my favorite connected film universes. When you first made The Conjuring 1, did you expect that this would become this phenomenon? It would lead to this whole connected universe and storyline? Um, I did not expect it. Um, to be that, that to have that measure of success, like it was successful to me because what happiness is the key to success, and I was happy. I was happy working with you. <laughs> God, I was happy <laughs> playing crazy. this character. Oh. I hated. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yes. And so, so we that, thought that yeah. you well, thought that you're going to speak for me. I am. I love when he does that. I am. Go, go. I am. And true. He's and become warm. more clairvoyant now and can read my mind. So go, go, go. go. Um, I thought. I'll say I. I thought that we would. I, I thought if we did it right, we'd at least be back for another one. I did not see the spinoffs coming. I don't know. True, you I didn't either. See yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, for sure. But we thought if we if we got it yeah. right, we'd be back for at least one more. Yeah. So. Yeah, and like I'm sure also having like James Wan at the helm, you're like, okay, this is somebody that can tell a story and weave a narrative and make this into something special. Yeah, I mean, I had an experience with him on another movie, so by the time this rolled around, I, I, I knew this was, you know, I knew he would deliver. <laughs> you know, I just had such confidence in him. Um, and so... That, Dude knows how to craft a, a scary movie. He does. He does yeah. indeed. And he did talk about all their other cases that first time around, so... Yeah, and again, I, I, I think because this is... Um, y- in most horror franchises, you're following the villains. I think because of the nature of certainly the conjuring side of the of the franchise, not so much the the Nan and Annabelle and um, you know the, the spinoffs, but for the conjuring franchise, since it follows your heroes, we can meet a different family or have a different case, um, and it's a, a different formula for a, uh, a a horror franchise. So on the note of you guys, the heroes, you guys are uh, portraying a real life married couple. So from my understanding, you guys got to meet Lorraine. What was that experience like? You know, what was that? What did you take away from that meeting? The first time we met Lorraine, you know, we had already, I had already watched all the YouTube videos of, of them into every video there was to to see. I had, I had watched. Um, and I, I suppose those tones when she's like talking about how she rebukes uh, the diabolical. She's, she, but I, I was so su- surprised at her sweetness, her absolute sweetness, and just how much she loved her guy, so much, and the way she talked about it. And then it came apparent to me that oh, we're not only tearing, telling a scary story. There's a real love story here, and that's such a unique combination, and that's what sets it apart, you know, uh, in terms of the horror genre. It was this beautiful, and and I and I can see that I could just see how she cherished him, and he was her absolute best friend, and and sort of the, and for me the 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 absolute contradiction of what she did, like the diabolical, that you know the grit and the the grime of what you know she went through, and yet how she could retain such a gentleness and a sweetness. She's just she was absolutely adorable. And we we got to know her a couple times at her house. It was our, our thing before we started the films was to go up there and and pay a visit to her uh, and to Tony Spear, her son-in-law, and Judy, her daughter. Um, and then she came to both the sets of Conjuring and Conjuring Two uh, in the premieres. So you know we 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 got to know her 
you know, speak to her a handful of times, which is wonderful. Vera, of course, got to know her very closely. So I love the thing um, that we sat in. The second Conjuring 2, the thing that we sat in, our visit took place in this thing. And yeah. it, that thing is at the end yes, of, that's of, right. the, of our movie, of this That's of exactly number right. Three. That's that exactly was right. sweet. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of You'll those things we mean, would... You see the film. We would, we would come back. I remember after the first film, we came back and there were... They were we were sitting in her living room and these chickens were running around and we just had this look like, we got to have chickens in the movie. So yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. calling James <laughs> afterwards and like, listen, I don't know what you're doing with the script, but we, yeah. we got to have chickens in this film. Yeah. Like now there's like in all the movies at some point, not in all the movies, but in most. Is that of like them. in your contract? Like we must have chickens. Yeah. Must it's have actually in her contract before. anyway. <laughs> Yeah, if you notice, even like The Departed, there's a chicken. With, with, yeah, up in the air, it's like with a chicken. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking more of uh, the horror movie genre, do you approach making a horror movie differently than you would a different genre of movie? Yes, I tend to let things linger more and be okay with with the discomfort sometimes of just like the ling. Like it, it's a timing thing. It's a, it's a percussive thing with horror films and playing out a scare. Much, much has to do with timing and getting comfortable with the discomfort of, of spacing out when, uh, to the point of things feeling like unbearable before doing the next, playing that next moment. So I love, you know, finding those different rhythms, um, just thinking about it musically. I think the... The difference of preparation or of uh, execution, I guess, is with, with a horror movie, um, honestly, not like a, a superhero movie, you, when that language is very heightened. So if anything, you you have to go full <laughs> full throttle. bore. You got to go throttle. full throttle when you're, you know, damning a demon back to hell. So it does require <laughs> a much different uh, energy. You know, you can't. You can't yeah, underplay it. it. You can't no, do any of those things if you were doing it. some kind of contemporary cool movie. Like you gotta just eat it. Yeah. And you just chew it. It's like <laughs> musical theater. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel also like as the movies that have have expanded, the Warrens are almost becoming kind of like these action stars. Like you know, it's not just that you're investigating a house. Like you're casting that demon back. And especially in the second one, you know, you're there's the house is caving in and it's it's just like it's more like an exhilarating experience too. Totes. I, I mean, I just, I just I totally see them as superheroes. You know, this one just happens to wear Mary Janes and have sweeping updos, you know, and be really <laughs> gentle about the way she goes about <laughs> damning That's devils right. back to hell. Right. But I mean, the, the awesome thing about playing this sort of real life superheroes is that you have this spiritual and this spiritual element to it, which makes it different than other superheroes. Yeah. I think that the conjuring, it's not just making people scared. It's, it's taking horror to a different level and it's resonating with audiences beyond just horror. Um, do you feel that too? Absolutely. I mean, the, honestly, I think from the studio perspective, that was probably evident in um in the first screening when you know they do these test screenings and they're on a point system and typically they i'll just make up a number but they test in like the 80s and all of a sudden this movie was testing in the high 90s meaning that it crossed over you know the, the amount of people that we've we've both had that said i don't even like horror movies but i really love the conjuring really to me um is uh, is a great compliment and that you know you know you'll have your horror fans that will come out and support you but the the movie has to resonate outside of that because that's we, we don't look at it as just a, a horror movie really this is a romantic and uh, a family drama built into this um into the horror genre um and, and honestly i think the great ones are you know um uh, the ones that resonate over that make it timeless all those things oh that's a classic horror movie uh usually it's because it yes there are the scares there um and they can be crafted in a jump scare or tone or more of a thriller um, but it's usually because of the uh the character that that surrounds it and that's something that james you know james leads from the heart uh when he created the franchise so anybody that's Steps in has to have that same uh, respect for character, 
uh, and and really romance because it enables us as as our Ed and Lorraine to really play in the love that the love will win, love succeeds, love will triumph, and that of course I think resonates to people that just want it, want an escape and want some hope, even in a dark movie that deals with demons and the devil and 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 some really dark things. We really try to find this light and this humor and um, and love. Yeah, I see that for sure. I'm definitely one of the people that's in that category of like, I'm not a fan of horror movies and I'm usually just like, oh, they're not rated too well. And then uh, the missus was like, well, this one's rated well. And I went, oh, I can't argue that. And I watch it. And, right. it. and I even get to the point where I'm trying to fit all the pieces of the puzzle together. I will say that The Conjuring 2, the, the nun stuff was... <laughs> close my eyes on that one. That, that yeah. one got my heart beating. Um, that that being said, the third mainline Conjuring movie, uh, The Devil Made Me Do It, is coming out soon. What can we expect to see from that one? We're always upping the ante on 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 everything, on <laughs> on the love, on the romance, on the on the on the fear, on the scares. But I think what's really cool about this one, given the nature of the case, that we we see Ed and Lorraine boots on the ground, and they need to figure out this thing, the source of this evil. So we leave the confines of the haunted house, and we go we we go out in the world and try to figure out. And, um, and and that is going to require Lorraine to to tap into um, different facets of her clairvoyancy, which is a real fun thing for me to to explore and look into um, not only telepathy uh, and clairvoyance, but uh, psychometry and 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 precognition and postcognition and uh, um, sort of all the, all these different facets of her clairvoyance that's 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 that was cool to yeah. to explore and this is you know this is of course based on the the first time in u.s history that someone used demonic possession as their defense argument in a in a homicide so uh, automatically that that is much more inclusive than than a, a family in peril this is involves law enforcement, justice system, working with other cops, trying to find another case. So it becomes a, uh, a tonally, it's, it, it plays out in probably more of a thriller aspect with, with the horror, uh, still the horror scares, and it's a horror movie for sure. But, you know, in those ways to me that like, is Silence of the Lambs a horror movie? Yeah. Is, is Seven a horror movie? Yeah. But, you know, it's the dark thriller aspect that can really uh, uh, blend those two genres. So this movie is obviously going to be filled with tons of scares, and uh, the whole franchise is just scary as hell. So what have been you guys' personal favorite scares from the franchise? Were there any scenes, like, on set where it was scary in that moment, or were there any that, like, surprised you while you are watching it in the theater? Rarely do things on set scare you in the movie, because sure. you're, you're crafting it. Um, I mean, seeing that clap scene was... It was, you know, you felt like, oh, you got me. That was good. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we, we rarely have those sort of moments. I did have a moment. Actually, I, I did have a moment in Conjuring 2 with, um, again, because because it's like a, it's like a, an, an orchestral piece where you don't, you don't see all of the, you know, that's in James's mind, or in this case, uh, Shavs, Michael Shavs, our director, in his mind of how you're crafting the scene. But I do remember the scene where I'm blinded in, in Conjuring 2 with the Crooked Man, uh, and, and, and Javier, who played the, the Crooked Man, w is such an amazing physical actor that even shooting the scene, it was so creepy. And I said to him, I said, that's the scariest scene I've ever done because it was <laughs> it was scary in the room and it's almost never scary in the room mm. sure mm. Vera I don't know there's one there's one moment in this latest one that I've seen it three four times now maybe f even five times it's it always gets me it always gets me and I don't I'm not going to tell you until you <laughs> you, you'll 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 know it when you see it and number three but I gotta see all, all this stuff um from behind when she's strapped in number one, when she's strapped uh, to the chair, I mean, the, the way basement? that that is edited, when the, the, yeah, yeah. When the chair goes upside the chair, down, you see through the, fit, the blood. When she, when she yeah. hachoos, when she sneezes or yes. spits out yes. the <laughs> blood onto yeah. the white, yeah, yeah, cloth, yeah, Lily Taylor's, yeah, character, yeah. Um, but it's not that. It's not even so much. It is for me one of the scariest moments uh, was just standing next to Lily Taylor. Like right before we had to shoot the scene, right. where she would tap into some growling, it was unearthly. Yeah, I don't know what she what was going on in her body or oh, her God. mind 
or what she was tapping into, but it was I, chills would just yeah. would just my entire body, and I didn't. It, I mean, we were even sitting in our chairs like, listening to her scream Roger over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is just, oh, brutal. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I've seen like her makeup in the BTS, and that's. Like in the BTS, it looks scary. It's not like they enhanced that in post. Like she on set looked like she was really creepy. Yeah, for the most part, you know, we yeah. try to do, I say mm -hmm. we, meaning everybody involved in these movies, you try to do as much as you can practically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, so of, of course, there's, there, there are a lot of VFX in there, but, you know, um, from the get go, we just wanted that, that realism so yeah i mean there's 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 i think only probably when she goes through the door and you see the sort of the light burn you know sort of bubbling on her skin in, in the first one yeah but everything else is super super practical stunts too the, most of the stunts most of the stunts become practical too so that becomes a whole other thing of trying to design a sequence with doubles sequences in this where you're using it, when we've done it in the other movies where there's there's doubles and there's wire work and you can't tell what's what and was that real and um even in the in the second one you know play playing someone going you know uh, uh backwards shoot the scene backwards and play it forward and it just looks kind of off and you don't know how it's all those sort of tricks that we uh that the directors try to do so we, it can just make you go what or what am i watching you know yeah there's one coming up in in number three where you would swear that it was generated and you know the choreography of yeah, what i'm talking about i do yeah where no it's awesome yeah you'll see yeah, <laughs> but it's practical. Done, done practically. Practical. Yeah, yeah. So exciting. Well, the the scene that that always gets me, and I've seen it, you know, five or six times, is Vera when you walk in the first one, walk down to the tree to check it out, and you're having the vision of her, and it's not even, you know, it's it's the framing of it, and and oh, your reaction, you turn around, and, and her feet uh, dangling, it's, her dirty it's feet so good. dangled. Yeah, so the dirty, yeah, yeah. the dirty foot dangle. It's a blues southern oh, band. Oh, he was James uh, <laughs> was really, really precise in the direction of that, down to how open my eyes would be. Uh, you know, open them a little more, open them a little more, <laughs> and he would count out. He would count out the the, the turn. Yeah, it took forever to crane my yeah. my head around. You just had to trust him. Okay? He's just like such a conductor he's just a brilliant right. conductor mm. it's just perfect um one final question for you both uh you mentioned earlier that the warrens relationship in the movies is a partnership and that's what's so special about them and it's clear it's clear that maybe the two of you have an okay friendship okay you know <laughs> there is the whole rooster in the con chicken in the contract thing but you seem like you tolerate each other um when when you know when that glass conjuring or the, the conjuring phone in the glass case rings and, and you get the call that there's another movie in the pipeline. Uh, what's your, what's kind of your reaction to that news? <gasps> oh, it's awesome, man. It's the ultimate reward, right? Uh, you know, the, 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 the biggest reward is the opportunity to, to do more, right? The biggest reward you get is the opportunity to do more. So I, yeah. I, I, it's always a, an awesome pat on the back saying, well done. Let's do another one. Yeah. I love it. I love doing it. I love this character. I love working with him. You know, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, no, of course I do. Um, yeah, I, I also think I, I think because of the way that it was um, set up and taken care of from the top down, from from uh, the studio, from the writers, and 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 obviously from from James and now. Um, Shav's directing the third one. Um, there's always such positivity um, with how we shoot it, and, and our producers that it's um, it's a uh, it's a it's a good time. It's sometimes it's not an easy time, but that's okay. It's always a rewarding time uh, because there's something so um, you know, as actors, you pray to get good material that can inspire you and that can move you, and that um, and that hopefully you can you can you, you can affect people. Right, whether it's scare them, make them laugh, make them smile, make them cry, um, make them leave the theater <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, after the film is over, um, and we feel like we 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 check all those boxes with these movies. So um, no one's trying, no one ever comes back and says, you know what, let's just try to eke out one more. It's hey, 
uh, we got an idea, here's a story, this case was so crazy, check it out. Then you kind of look at the case and we kind of Wikipedia, and like, oh, that's awesome, yeah. Uh, you know, so you're, you're always there along the, along the way of, the, these are our ideas, what do you think? Um, and so it's a, it's a very um, uh, communal in, uh, inspiring uh, scenario, which is nice. And the fact that they're successful does help. Uh, well, I hope that we keep digging into the case files and getting more and more. It's been such an honor to sit down and talk to you both. Uh, this has been so delightful. So thank you so much. Um, the Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It, It's go see it. It's out now. It's a great scare, a great time, and such a fantastic addition to the Conjuring universe. Uh, again, Patrick and Vera, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Thank you. You as well.